Howdy everyone, I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor in the University of Texas at Austin where I work, teach, conduct research in data science, specifically data analytics, geostatistics, and machine learning. So I realized that I had uh, built about 50 interactive Python dashboards to support my students while I'm teaching them data science. And I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool to put together a set of walkthroughs of these dashboards. So continuing with that series, this is a dashboard on the famous Bayesian updating demonstration from Savaya's book, A Bayesian Tutorial, which I like to call Savaya's Bayesian coin. Okay, so here I'm gonna go through this workflow with you. If you want to walk through it and open it up and try it out, all you gotta do is have Anaconda installed. Then you can go to, ahead to my GitHub repository. When you go there, you'll find I have a Python numerical demos. Don't worry, this link will also be in the video description. Go all the way down here, you'll see interactive, right about here, there's many of these, interactive via coin toss, right here. So you can go ahead and download this, open this up in Jupyter Notebook, and you will be here. You're gonna go here and do a kernel restart and run all. Do that, it should all run fine, I hope so. It should run okay, okay. Now what you can do is you can go back up to the top and we can begin this demonstration together. The purpose here, we wanna be pretty quick and efficient. Let's go through and make some observations, see some interesting results together. First of all, as we get started, let's go ahead and just look here. I do have complete lectures available in my courses and so I have, I have lectures on Bayesian probability and so forth with more descriptions that can help you if you wanna go back and learn about Bayesian updating. Let me go ahead and just remind you about the fundamentals of Bayesian updating. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a prior model prior to data. We're gonna take that and apply a likelihood, which is given the information from the data, it's the probability of the data given the model. The whole thing can be standardized for closure by the evidence, which is just based on the data. And the result is we get a posture. We update to get a posture, which is the probability of the model given the data. Now, often the evidence term can be dealt with through normalization, marginalization, in which case we'll describe this as the posture is proportional to the likelihood times the prior. And that's what we're going to do in this case. Let me introduce the problem. It goes like this. I present to you a coin. Now this is a 50 cent euro right here. So I got my coin right here. And I'm gonna ask you a question. What is the probability that this is a fair coin? What's your model? How would what, you say about this coin? And so if we take a Bayesian perspective of solving this challenging problem of whether or not this is a fair coin, now, a fair coin would have 50% probability of heads, 50% probability of tails. If you were to take a Bayesian approach, what you could do is you could start with a prior. Now, the prior would be based on, it would represent your knowledge experience with me. And so the prior would be, you could look at it and say, well, you know, uh, Dr. Perch looks like an honest individual. I believe this should be a fair coin, 50% probability of heads with a high certainty. Or you might look at me and say, I've never met, I never met Dr. Perch. I don't know Dr. Perch. It could be any kind of coin going all the way from double tails, to double heads, and any type of weighting in between. And then you'd say, okay, a naive distribution. That's the prior model. Okay, what's the likelihood? The likelihood comes from coin tosses. If you take the coin and you toss it a bunch of times, okay, I got a heads, toss it another time, I got a t heads, toss it another time. You could keep tossing the coin and get heads and tails from it, and that would be data. And now what the likelihood to do is it'll take and calculate the probability of that outcome given different pro probabilities of heads for the coin. Okay, so you can go ahead and calculate what's the probability of the, seeing that data given the model. You take those and you use this relationship here, the posture is proportional to the likelihood times the prior, and you can calculate the posture. 
I'll give you a couple more details about what we're going to do. We're going to assume a Gaussian prior. So all we have to do is specify the mean and the standard deviation, a Gaussian distribution. So it's just got two parameters for the prior, which is the probability of heads. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take and calculate likelihood. For likelihood, we just need to know the number of coin tosses and the number of times that we got heads with those coin tosses. So basically we toss the coin and we just record it and we put that in and we can use the binomial distribution to calculate the probability of that outcome, those tosses, given the model itself. And so it's pretty straightforward for us to go ahead and just calculate that from the binomial. We can get the posture just by taking the prior times the likelihood and we get rid of that proportional to by normalizing over all possible cases. Basically, we'll take all of the cases for probability of heads, weighting or bias in the coin, we'll solve it over and over again, and we'll take the sum of those outcomes, divide each one of the outcomes by the sum, that forces it to sum to one, and then we have the posture. Okay, that's how we're gonna get it done. If you don't quite understand that's fine. Let's jump into the dashboard and you'll start to gain an intuition and I'll go back and refer to what I just talked about. Okay, so here we go. Here's our dashboard right here. I'm going to zoom just out just a little bit so it all fits on the screen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the prior. This is the prior distribution right here, probability of heads. Now, if we know that this is a fair coin, okay, so the mean of the probability of heads should be 50%, 50, 50-50 coin. And if you know you have high certainty that it's a fair coin, because you looked at me and you said, Dr. Perch is an honest individual, he wouldn't carry around a weighted coin, you could go ahead and take this and reduce the standard deviation. You see what's happening? When we reduce the standard deviation, we now have a very narrow distribution for the prior. In other words, this is most certainly a fair coin. Now what you can do is you can go ahead and take and toss the coin a bunch of times. If you were to toss the coin say let's go ahead and toss it like a hundred times and we go ahead and we actually observe 20% of the time we've got heads. Now what's very interesting, let's go ahead and take a really careful look at this. From the binomial distribution, you see we saw 20% of the time we had heads. So the probability of the data given the model, you can see right here that we would expect the mean to be a coin that is weighted to have 20% of the time heads. In other words, it's a coin that's weighted towards the tails, but it has this uncertainty distribution right here. Now, what will happen if we increase the number of coin tosses? We take the coin and we toss it a bunch more times. Look what happens. 100, 200, 500, 800, 1,000 times. Okay, now take a really careful look. You saw what happened, right? As you increase the number of coin tosses, you see my bar charts increasing here. It's showing me I have more data. Did you notice that the distribution got narrower for the likelihood? In other words, we had more data from the binomial distribution. We can see that we're getting more certain of this coin being weighted towards tails, only 20% chance of having heads. Now let's look and see what Bayesian updating does. This is the prior. You had high certainty that this was a fair coin. This is the data looking pretty certain that we have a weighted coin and look at the result. Do you see what happened? You can see that in fact, it's giving us a posture that's not centered on fair coin. It's starting to move towards the likelihood because the certainty, but it's actually closer to the prior because the prior was even more certain. You see how this is more narrow than this? You can tell because of the, the sum to one constraint, the area under the curve must be equal to one. So you can tell this is a bit higher because this is a bit narrower, which means it's more certain. That's why it's higher, right? The area remains one on both this and this. Okay, so, and if you look really carefully, which one of these is the most certain? The prior, the likelihood, or the posture? Do you see how the posture is a little bit even higher than the prior? 
And the reason being is that when we take a prior and we add additional information, it's shifted and its variance decreased because our certainty increased. Okay, I hope this is helpful. I hope that you can get a sense now of kind of this Bayesian updating. Let's test a couple of N members. Let's say that you decide, I don't know Michael Perch. I've really never talked to him in person. I've seen some of his videos. Uh, he kind of looks like a bit of a joker. He might kind of be kidding around here. He might have any type of coin all the way, way from double tails to double heads to a fair coin or anything in between. So you put the distribution to have a maximum. It's standard Gaussian, so we'd expect a mean of right in the middle, 0.5, but the variance equal to one. Look at my prior distribution right now. Do you see how it looks uniform? It's Gaussian, but it's so wide it looks uniform. Now if you look at the likelihood, it remained the same. We still have our thousand coin tosses with 20% uh, of time we saw hits. Now look what happens. The posture is equal to the likelihood because the prior had no information. So it's all going to become the likelihood just from the data. You had no information prior to data. Your posture is just based on the data. Okay, let's go ahead and narrow that up again. I'll give it something reasonable. Let's narrow it up to something like that. And now what we're gonna do is let's reduce the number of coin tosses to a very small number of coin tosses. Okay, so now if you look really carefully, we only have five coin tosses. That's the minimum in my dashboard. So now that likelihood distribution is very wide, it has very little information. Look what happens to the posture. Our prior was centered on fair coin uh, with a little bit of uncertainty. Maybe you thought maybe the coin is damaged, like maybe it wasn't manufactured perfectly. Maybe there's, you know, it's worn or something. So you said it could be a little bit weighted towards heads or tails, anywhere between like a P10, 0.4 something to a P90, 0.58 or so, something like that. Now if you look, the likelihood has very little information. It's very naive, almost naive. And if you look at the posture, do you see how it's almost equal to the prior? Isn't that cool? So Bayesian updating, it can see the fact that you didn't flip the coin enough times. You really don't have enough data to say very much. Okay, so we have kind of two interesting cases right there. You can try all kinds of other cases out which are very interesting. You can go ahead and take it and say, well, what if the data is suggesting a higher probability than equal, than fair coin for probability of heads? And you could say, what happens if you have a prior model which is low? And you can start to get a sense of what happens as far as the behavior of Bayesian updating. And it has some really interesting features. Like you can see right here, we have a low prior model, we have a high likelihood model, and you can see how the posture is falling in the middle. But in general, it, has, it will have lower uncertainty than the prior or the likelihood because it's more information, right? You've got prior and likelihood combined. And you can also see that if you take the prior model and you make it very certain, look at what happened. That posture is getting pulled very close to where the prior is. Prior was 0.3, right about there. You can see it's almost there. As I make the prior model less and less certain, look at what happens. The posture moves towards the likelihood. Okay, lots of cool things you can do. Savaya, the Bayesian coin is a great, great example to learn the concept of Bayesian updating. You got a prior model before you flip the coin and then you have the likelihood coming from the coin tosses and you combine the two sources of information together, Bayesian updating to get the posture to assess the fairness in a coin. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you. I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin where I share all of my educational content with anyone GitHub, YouTube, I even promote it on Twitter. I'm the Geostats guy. Come by and check out all of my content. I'm here to help and assist. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. All right, stay safe.